Well, now it's time for a look at the day's papers. They're continuing to report new details about last week's devastating sinking of a ship carrying hundreds of migrants. Alison Sargent is here to tell us more about how that is being covered. Yeah, Sharon, we're learning more and more about the horrible conditions on board. Uh, the Guardian here is reporting that um, Pakistanis were singled out and forced below deck. They, the paper says that crew members uh, mistreated them when they came up to try and get fresh water or tried to escape uh, from down below. Women and children, we read, were also effectively locked up in the hold. Uh, as a result, no women or children survived, and the huge number of Pakistani citizens were also among the dead. Uh, Pakistan Today, a Pakistani paper reports that 298 uh, Pakistanis died. The story, uh, as you can see, is still on the front pages uh, in Pakistan this Monday is actually a day of mourning uh, in the country for all of the Pakistani victims. Uh, the prime minister has set up a committee to probe this incident. And then we read in another Pakistani paper, Dawn, uh, that 11 suspects uh, allegedly involved in trafficking those Greek shipwreck victims uh, have been arrested in Pakistan. Coming to France then next, Alison. The Paris Air Show opens this Monday. It's on quite a few of the newspapers and front pages here in France. Yeah, it is. We were just hearing about it from Solange. It's known as the Salon du Bourget here in France because it takes place in Le Bourget, a north of Paris. We can take a look at the front page of La Croix. They have one of the big questions on their front page uh, that's being asked at this show. Uh, can air travel be green? Can it be eco-friendly? Uh, the aviation sector has agreed to reach net zero emissions by 2050. This year's air show is going to be all about exploring potential solutions. Lots of papers, though, uh, are very skeptical. We can take a look at uh, 20 minutes. They call it a uh, L'Avion Vert, Green Plains, a mirage that is not taking off for environmentalists. Um, the paper cites a progressive think tank which says that all of the alternative fuel options, including hydrogen, have very poor uh, fuel efficiency. The paper also cites an activist who says that the only way to really make flying more eco-friendly, we don't want to face it, but it is to just limit flying altogether. Uh, I also want to show you guys a cartoon from Aujourd'hui en France. Uh, here we see some executives uh, themselves looking a little bit skeptical. Uh, this one is saying, this plane powered by wind turbines is a good idea, but what do we do when there's no more wind? Uh, so hopefully the innovations presented at Le Bourget are going to be uh, more innovative than this. Well, staying here in France, Alison, for the first time, a foreign member of the French resistance is going to be entered into the Pantheon. What's that one all about? That's right. Well, the, the Pantheon uh, is France's highest honor, of course. Uh, this man's name was Misak Manouchian. He was a survivor of the Armenian genocide. In addition to being the first foreign resistance fighter to be placed in the Pantheon, he's also going to be the first communist one. Uh, we see him here on the front page of France's communist paper, L'Humanité. Uh, their headline uh, down here translates to... Uh, foreigners and yet still our brothers. Uh, as we read in another paper, uh, La Croix today, uh, Manouchian will be placed uh, in the Pantheon alongside his wife, who we see here, uh, Méliné. La Croix interviewed a historian who explains that despite a number of foreigners and communists taking part in the resistance, well, their participation was somewhat forgotten later on in the context of France's colonial wars and also the Cold War when they sort of became enemies. Uh, Manouchian was a member of a communist resistance that was made mostly uh, up of foreign fighters. So this historian says that honoring him is a way of sort of correcting the narrative and doing justice to that historic moment uh, that was the French resistance when people from all backgrounds came together to liberate France. Staying on the topic of liberation, Alison, this last story. Today is the 19th of June or Juneteenth, America's newest federal holiday. That's right. Uh, Joe Biden made it a federal holiday back in 2021. Uh, it marks the date in 1865, for those who don't know, when the last slaves in the U.S. learned that they had been freed. Now, according to a poll here that you see done by Newsweek, uh, the majority of Americans won't actually be celebrating. Now, it sounds bad, uh, but this poll actually only surveyed one and a half thousand people, so a very, very small sample size. Uh, and the poll also found that about 70 percent of people, so the vast majority, do support Juneteenth being a holiday. Uh, a sociologist explained to Newsweek that because the holiday is so new to non-black Americans, many people 
people just haven't really figured out how to celebrate it yet and maybe question whether they should. Uh, for some inspiration and encouragement, uh, you can take a look at this article in the Washington Post. Uh, Theodore R. Johnson writes that Juneteenth is a holiday for all of us. He calls it our second Independence Day for Americans. He writes it symbolizes how the emancipation of black people initiated a new beginning for a nation that had fallen short of its founding ideals. So he says, without a shared celebration on June 19th, well, there's no reason for fireworks on July 4th. A good encouragement for all the Americans out there to try and get out there today and find a way to celebrate. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. That's Alison Sargent taking us through the day's papers. Well, for more press reviews, you can always head to our website, france24.com.